Now's the time Now is the time for all good men To get together with one another Iron out their problems and iron out their quarrels And try to live as brothers And try to find peace within Without stepping on one another And do respect of the women of the world, just remember we all had mothers. Make this land a better land in the world in which we live. And help each man be a better man with the kindness that you give. And I know we can make it. I know that we can. I know done well, we can work it out. Our special guest today in the studio is Mr. Ed Cromarty. Mr. Cromarty is Vice Chair of the Goldsboro, uh, rather of the uh, Wayne County Board of Commissioners. How are you doing? Fine, sir. How are you doing I'm today? I'm doing great. Always good to see you. Thank you, sir. This is National Black History Month, and uh, you have brought some, what I would, and I love this, you have brought some interesting information to share with our viewers that well, pertains to Black History Month. Well, thank you. Uh, I hope it's going to be interesting well, for I think folk. It is. I think it is. Uh, and while it's black history, it's about employment and working of, that had to do with black history and the folk who came through time here in America and the kind of work that they did. And then the essence of it is inventions by Afro-Americans. And I just want to share some of that. I think some of these things, in fact, most of these things are so important. This actually is is American history. It is American and, history. And, this is American and, and history. Because it, it, it all had to do with early, a lot of it, early American history and how things evolved. And I'm going to take the liberty to, to glance back at my sheet. I just have a little bit of a little cheat sheet, sheet here. But well, that's okay. We want to remind the viewers that if you, uh, that the, the, what they, if they are ever considering an invention of any kind, is that the whole thing, you, where you start, or where I would think you would start, is you have to find a need. That's true. And then fill that need. And I think that's what you will see has been has happened. Well, here. I, uh, let's talk about right in the home, or where the where the where the in homes, okay. uh, early America. Yeah, you have the baby buggy. The what? The baby buggy. Oh, the, the baby buggy. buggy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the stroller. Oh, baby. Yeah, the yeah. stroller. Okay. But well, this is it's way before someone named it the stroller. It was a buggy. They called it the baby buggy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell me about and the baby course, buggy. Well, this was invented by. Uh, W.R. Richardson in June 18, 1899. Now, you can just imagine in the domestic world, uh, there's a baby and there's someone tending to that baby. Right. Now, if you're out in public, someone's going to be walking and then someone's going to be carrying that baby. That's right. And if you're domestic help and you're going to be out there and shopping, someone's carrying the baby. Right. The most convenient thing is to be able to have that baby with you but to be able to have something for that baby to rest in. Something comfortable. So, something comfortable. Yeah. Very useful. The baby bug was invented and made it made life more pleasant for the baby. But I guarantee you it made it life more pleasant for the person who was carrying that baby and tending to it. Yes, there was a so, need. There was a need. So uh, uh, this Mr. Richardson uh -huh. happened to see that need uh -huh. and say, wait a minute. I'm going to make life more comfortable for everyone. <laughs> so it's an African-American. An, an, well, obviously. Yeah. But he was watching the African-American community working as domestic help. Because oh, that's okay. who would have been carrying that baby out in public, tending to the baby. And so those kinds of things moved along. And you just naturally find, like you said, a need. Mm -hmm. And then you satisfy that need right. and make life more pleasant Easy. for everyone. And I've always uh, uh, looked at it as one of those things that was very useful in early America. Baby buggy. Dust pan. The dust pan? The like dust when pan. you sweep? Yes, sir. You don't have to figure that out. I guess somebody had to invent somebody that. Somebody had to invent it. Well, if you if you didn't plan on sweeping all that dust out on the porch and yeah. outside, yeah. you probably need to pick it up. And so, yeah. what, you see, there was a, and what we're getting at is, is the real needs that help the folk who are doing the work mm -hmm. do the work a little bit easier yeah. and, and make life a little more uh, because if there were if there were servants uh, and help in well, the house, well, that's the whole point right there. Yeah, uh, the, most of these things, whether it was in the ironing board, is another yeah, situation. Ironing board. Can you imagine now, when we can't find our ironing board? <laughs> one thing that we do sometimes is just sort of find us a nice side of the bed and yeah. iron it on that. True. But can't you imagine that here this person is in this house working, 
there's all these clothes and fancy jackets that, she, that they have to press. Mm -hmm. So the need for a nice ironing board mm -hmm. came to play. Easy on the person doing the work. The work turns out more professionally done. So a great add to American life was the, was the ironing board. Now, just think about this other thing. Now, we, we've seen these big, tall, fancy southern homes. Someone had to invent an elevator. I guess so. Yeah. That, was that Mr. Otis? No. <laughs> well, Alexander Miles, October 11, 1867. That was my next guess. 1867. 1867. 1867. Where did they plug it in? Well, now, let's uh -oh. talk about this whole electricity oh. thing. <laughs> now, I'm not an expert on this, but um, you're talking about weights. Okay. Oh, okay. Redistribution of weight. Okay. I'm not going to get into that whole business because no, I'm, I'm not, not telling you I know how to explain it. No. But I can tell you this. Weights without electricity mm -hmm. can cause you to move some heavy people. Heavy people and heavy <laughs> objects up and down. <laughs> That's what I meant. So I know you didn't mean people. You no, I didn't mean people. Yourself. No. So, you know, there are all kind of ways to, to do this. And I'm sure there are some experts out there thinking right now that they need to come on this show and explain <laughs> to you how early <laughs> elevators were used. Yeah, okay, this, but this is Mr. Miles. Yeah. Mr. This, Miles invented let's, let's back up just a an elevator. Yes, yeah, true. To get people up, up upstairs. Up, yeah. And, and probably. A lot of heavier things that you just couldn't. Yeah. I mean, just think of all the work that that was made easier. Moving furniture, furniture yeah, uh, exactly. all kinds of uh, safes that yeah. folk had all their money in. You could put <laughs> that upstairs. But uh, Alexander Miles, 1867. 1867. 1867. Right after the war between the states was over. For right real. after. Yes, sir. It's amazing. Uh, a lot of the inventions uh, took place in that time frame, 1860. 1865, right on yeah. up to 1900. Wow. And because uh, there was an opportunity to be able to maybe to access the opportunity to do inventions or maybe a little bit more free time or, mm -hmm. or the feeling that you could go out and do something That's it. like that. So I think yeah. it had to do with uh, uh, just the idea that, you know, I'm able to go out, use my creativity, and invent some things that I've been thinking about all along. Mm -hmm. and, and I say this. Uh, the, the need for inventions is not over. But we oh, need uh -huh. to free our children's minds to think of all the things that make them feel better, act better, do better, and maybe have something in their future. You're but so right. it, it's about creativity yeah. and, and letting your mind be free. Uh, one thing I love to <coughs> bring note to, a lot of folk felt like that, well, Tiger Wood came along and all of a sudden uh, that was the near all to be all. Well, <laughs> the golf tee was invented by a uh, Mr. No. T. Grant, 1899. Wait a minute. Yes, it did. Get out of here. Now, the they golf used tee. to bunch up dirt well, and put the ball imagine? off them. Yes, sir. And he invented the golf tee? So that you could just put it down there, put the tee, put the ball on it, back away, let the golf player go about his business. And what was his name? His name was Mr. T. Grant, T. December 12th, 1899. How about that? Now, just like you say, he... Can you imagine having to try to find some dirt to make a lure? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Very conveniently, all of a sudden, the whole business of playing golf shifted into another realm for that simple little golf tee. You have to wonder where his mind was going when he said, man, I got a great idea. Well, you know, and, and then to be able to get it in place uh -huh. and maintain credit for it. Yes. Now, now that's, that's tough. The, that's that's. That's, That's the whole one. part about this time frame. And now, do you think that the inventions just started after 1860, 1865? Oh, no. No. Oh, no, no, no. There was, in, there was some inventions made back down there. Oh, yeah. Before Long emancipation before. Yeah. that someone probably didn't get credit for. But that's just how it happens all yeah. throughout life. Uh, the pencil sharpener? You're kidding. Listen. Now, what... It, how could we? I mean, that's just one of those convenient things that just makes a, a, makes a, a so written letter look so much better. Oh, yeah. Have a nice sharpened pencil. Yeah. Uh, typewriter. Typewriter. And so all kinds of things in education that has promoted education and, and pushed education forward, Afro-Americans. Now, the one last thing that I'm going to mention on this table is a riding saddle. Yeah. A saddle? A riding, a riding saddle. saddle. A riding saddle. Now, this is how it's characterized here. I'm not suggesting that was the first saddle ever made. No. I'm just saying they call it a riding saddle, and I think they're 
associate with what we've seen in America, maybe mm -hmm. what we've seen on the Western shows, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. the thing that a lot of people have overlooked that uh, Afro-Americans were involved in the whole business of uh, herding cattle and the, the, oh, the West. Yeah. And no, it wasn't just... Uh, Lashley Rue and Long Ranger. No. There were a whole <laughs> lot of different cowboys out and those there. Those were nice guys. And yeah, but there but were a lot of cowboys. There was a out. lot of cowboys yeah, out and there. And there were a lot of African Americans. A lot of Afro American cowboys out there in uh, uh, training horses, uh, uh, taming horses, sure. herding cattle, and helping to move America west. So it just wasn't uh, one group. It was a it was a it was a mixture of groups. It was a mixture. So we, yeah. we need to uh, look at that. Yeah. Now let me, and uh, the reason that I picked some of these things, it had, it had to do with work. Uh, these things had to do with work. Mm -hmm. People working and trying to make their lives better in their workplace. I have a great interest in the skill trades. That's what I came out of. Uh, I, my first post high school education was at uh, Fever Tech in Cumberland County mm -hmm. as a taking a class in body repair painting. And that gave me my first skill trade. And so I look back on this sheet and I think of all the trades that's connected to the inventions that we find on this sheet that probably number 50 or 60 items that were invented by uh, Afro-Americans. Now yeah. the one thing that I kept looking on here was for a trial for, for doing mortar, yeah. uh, laying brick. Yeah. Uh, uh, the trial that you used. Now, I'm surprised that that wasn't invented by uh, uh, an Afro-American. It's many brick that have been laid oh, by yeah. afro -American. And the reason oh, I yeah. bring that up proudly, because some of the most profitable skills that I know about during my early youth, they were practiced by Afro-Americans. Uh, matter of fact, in Cumberland County, the only bricklayers that I knew were Afro-Americans. Really? And uh, one of the best carpenters in, uh, in our neighborhood, happened to be a second cousin of mine. And so the skilled trades go back in our culture, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of it. And I, I just always advocate that uh, our young people need to remember where the, where the independence is. If you are a skilled craft, whether it be auto, techni uh, auto technology or electronics, electricity, uh, carpentry, masonry, plumbing, you name the uh, air conditioning, refrigeration. Those are skilled trades that gives you a level of independence. And I, I look back at this sheet right here, and I know that these inventions cause a lot of folks to become independent uh, employees. And that's what I advocate to this day, is, is how we can move forward and stay in tune with skills that are like what was on that sheet. Excellent, excellent. Mr. Ed Cromarty. Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate thank it. Thank you and so I much. Thank you for, sh for letting me share this with you. Yes, sir. How about that? Now is the time. Now is the time for all good men to get together with one another. Iron out their problems and iron out their quarrels and try to live as brothers. And try to find peace within without stepping on one another And do respect of the women of the world Just remember we all had mothers